Good morning, folks. We've got a largely quiet Earth facing half of the sun. You have to work to see filaments or highly magnetic areas. We have some incredible news stories today, but we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. Found the last day on the sun to be quite calm indeed. Coronal holes are facing Earth on the south. Meanwhile, the previous coronal hole stream has stabilized. That's the plateau over on the right side of the solar wind charts here, and it is returning geomagnetism to quieter conditions. Let's take a look at the two main models for the Gulf Hurricane. Euro on the left, one day ahead of GFS on the right, and you can see the forecasts are now in agreement. This is set to be a major situation like Hurricane Harvey, or maybe even Katrina. It is also worth noting that both models show it catching a ride north up towards the Tennessee Valley as opposed to swinging back eastward right away, say over Georgia. Sticking with weather up next, but illuminating the nonsense put into the public. NASA, with a dire warning that things are going to dry up and a drier future means more wildfires. Of course, NOAA put out a release on the same day explaining how rainfall has increased and we should expect nothing but more and more rain. By the way, we are coming off the rainiest six months in U.S. history and the second rainiest 12 months. Up next, call them black holes, plasmoids, plasma nuclei, whatever. They say two of them are about to collide in this galaxy. The problem is that no matter how I try to play devil's advocate and see it their way, to me it just looks like the bright parts are the jets north and south of the dusty, obscuring plasma torus around the middle of the object. This would explain those green patches as well as the cosmic jet blowout material, but then again, these people are hammers with hammer government funding, so they see nails. Up next, so close but so far away, this paper is discussing illustrious the cosmic simulation package I often use to show different universal simulations. The good news is that they are thinking they see a completely connected picture between galaxies of the universe through the cosmic web. The rough part is that they have no plans on investigating the baryons only potential. They believe we still have to do with dark matter. Boy, I wish the cosmology infomentary wasn't nearly a month away because Dr. Peratt had some very choice words on this topic, but either way, if they are able to adequately demonstrate the interconnectedness while the other studies debunking dark matter existence continue, they may be able to take an interdisciplinary look past their dark matter hammer mentality. Last but not least, our top story, the strange booms in the sky. Many hypotheses for what they are and why they sometimes sound like they're coming from the ground below. We had offered the solar wind effect on the ionosphere with Earth's weakening magnetic field, and it turns out that was wrong, but it was closer than most of the other guesses. Turns out that the same electromagnetic solar energy that creates the auroral displays also creates coronal discharges, crackling, and similar sounds. Only 70 to 80 meters up, that's like 250 to 300 feet. When there is a big one, this can be widespread and slow building. And if the generation of these crackles and booms is that low in the atmosphere, a widespread generation around you could seem to be coming from the ground. As Earth's magnetic field weakens, that should get louder and more prevalent, by the way. And we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank you